The last two hybridized types of orbitals that you need to know around a central atom would be, well, think about this. You got PCL5, and, and you know that when you, when you draw something like that, you're going to exceed the octet rule for the central atom, right? So when we draw PCL5, here we go. We've got group 7 times 5 is 35, plus 5 is 40, 40 total valence electrons. And since we have five chlorines here, and each one would have an octet around it, 8 times 5 is 40. And so, by the way, that phosphorus, totally stable because of the fact that it's got five bonds here, which means then that the formal charge would be the valence from the periodic table, 5, minus the five assigned um, electrons here, because it's bonding electrons divided by 2, for here, a total of, there's 10 bonding electrons divided by 2, one for each bond there. And you get 5 minus 5 equals 0 for a formal charge for that molecule. Hey, that we know, it's got five effective pairs around the central atom, so you call that a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement, and that happens to be the shape here, trigonal bipyramidal. What have you got? Five effective pairs. But if you've got one s orbital and three p orbitals, that's four valence orbitals that can hybridize to only form four types of molecular orbitals, right? So um, we need another one. And what happens is because, because phosphorus is not in period two, but can exceed the octet rule because it's lower down than period two of the periodic table, and it does here, we need to go grab a d orbital as well to bring it down because that's one of the valence orbitals too and then amalgamate it with the 1s and the 3p orbitals that are valence orbitals for phosphorus and then all of a sudden what you get is a d coming together with an s and 3p's to form dsp3 what's the total one two three four five and so that's when you have five effective pairs what is the hybridization of the phosphorus here that would be dsp3 hybridization and by the way since this chlorine uh, when I draw the Lewis diagram, would have one, two, three, four effective pairs around it. All the chlorines have sp3 hybridization. And then, of course, when you have a central atom that's got six things bonded to it, okay, then you need to have, now that's going to be an octahedral arrangement. You remember that? When you have six effective pairs, it's octahedral. This is an octahedron here, so it's got Again, one, two, three, four, five, six effective pairs around the sulfur. What does that mean then? Well, you need two d orbitals with an s and three p's to come together to make six valence orbitals that amalgamate and hybridize. So what are you going to get here? You are going to get an octahedral shape with a hybridization for that sulfur of d2. SP3. You know, some people just say SP3D2 or SP3D. That's okay. It doesn't matter what order you put them in, as long as you know that there's one, two, three, four, five, six orbitals that are valence orbitals there that can actually form that octahedral complex. So, there are all of your hybrid orbitals for the main shapes SP3, SP2, SP, DSP3, and D2SP3 that all go along with, respectively, 4, 3, 2, 5, and 6 effective pairs.